Well, uh, thank you. I'm, I really appreciated the uh, presentation from uh, Serin Khadim Busso uh, and from Binta Jup. Uh, both of you, um, your contributions really added to what I had already shared. Um, the question, why peace? Why did we all focus on peace? Um, very, very important because in Senegal, uh, peacemaking and nonviolence would not be a major emphasis of Maurits. However, in living in post 9-11 New York City, I believe Maurits had to find a way to make themselves um, fit into an American society that was suddenly very hostile towards uh, Islam and hostile towards Muslims. And they dug into their tradition and they find that they actually have a very powerful, a, a long-standing witness about nonviolence from their founder. Uh, so embracing it makes perfect sense. Um, and uh, the other thing I wanna say about Binta, your presentation, I, I also am very impressed at the role that women have played in NST. I've interviewed some of the women. I've seen your, your contributions. And um, uh, so that's an, a very uh, unique thing you bring uh, as a daira and as a space for, for women to present themselves to and their gifts to the world. Uh, might I add one more thing before I pass the mic over? And that is to say, um, I really have enjoyed researching the NST. Wow. Because um, you actually do have a contribution to make to American society. So you're gifted you with uh, uh, two cultural heritages and uh, you're, you're well-educated people. And right now, American society has a lot of questions about whether or not immigrants are welcome, whether or not they have an important role to play. And so highlighting something like peace and nonviolence, highlighting a Muslim group that has a place for women in leadership means that you have an, a very attractive and interesting contribution to make to the larger American society. I'll stop there. Hadim, you would like to say something? Yeah, you have the floor. Unmute. Unmute. Hadim. Okay, I'm here. Um, uh, I'm sorry because the first time I was speaking, I just thanked. Uh, I told I have only five minutes. The reason why I I made it so shortly, but I have something else to say. Uh, I was saying that the message of Sir Ahmed Bamba is a uh, universal. The nationality of the founder of the Muridia is a uh, universal, universal as the message of Islam in his many writing and teaching lessons. Uh, like he said, I will speak to them in their own la land. I will explain them the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the message of Allah is peace and love. The reason, one of the reasons why when Sayyid Ahmad Bamba returned uh, from the exile to, 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 to his land, he said, I forgive, I forgive everybody because I don't want to, 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 to do wrong to people. The reason why uh, we are, as a murid in Harlem, we, 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 we bring peace to the community. Uh, even the white, um, the white American and the black American and the African American, they know that the message of Shia Ahmad Bamba is peace and love and gathering together and make the things clear and nicer and call people to Islam nicely. Don't, don't do wrong to people. Even they are not Muslim, you have to respect them, to give them respect, to call them to Islam. The reason why, the, one of the reasons, the, most of people or many people, they always, they every day returning to Islam, uh, following the teaching of Shia.
Mohamed Bamba by the that we said by the few of officer in Tuba that we said in Tuba. One of the reasons the the murid the murid dawa is uh, right now is the 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 most uh, dawa the 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 real dawa of Islam because it's calling people people to practice Islam by peace and love. This is what I was I was uh, wondering to add again and to remind the the Nawi Tuba that what I mentioned before. Firstly, uh, they have they are lucky because they was born Muslims and they was born. American citizen, so they don't have a uh, language problem. They don't have anything to, uh, to they, ha they don't have excuses to presenting and explaining the teaching of Shia Ahmad Bamba. So they have to work hardly to bring people to Islam, but by peace and love, as I mentioned before. This is what I was uh, wondering to, to add to my, to my presentation uh, lately. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yes, yeah, in city. Uh, well, yeah, I think I have a question for Mr. Jonathan, but before I proceed, I think it's very important for also to share the support that we've received from Serin Khadim Busso, which was who was an imam in New York at the time where we were being where we were when we were organizing, and also the elders of the community. So I just wanted to uh, mention that before I proceed because I forgot. But for Mr. Jonathan, I also wanted I have a question, and my question has to do with what sparked the interest of your study for NST? In what sense did you see us different from other youth movements, Islamic youth movements per se? You know, I, I, there are so many varieties of youth movements in the United States, you know, that are Muslim, but what makes the particularity of NST in your eyes? Me too, I have a question to Mr. Jennifer. So I, I was doing research on the Murid community, doing research on nonviolence, asking mm -hmm. whether or not there are Muslims who practice nonviolence. And just simply, to, I was doing that research starting in 2016. So NST was created and came into being in the middle of my field work. And I had the blessing of meeting some of the leaders early on. And then you all, like you and many others, welcomed me into your midst. And I found you uh, living out what your, your Tarika says you should do. And so it made it interesting to focus on you. Great. That Thank you. Simple Thank you. answer. Thank you. Mr. Jennifer? Mr. Busso. Sure. OK. I, I have a question for Mr. Jennifer. I say hi again. Oh. Hi again. Hey, brother. Okay. Yeah. It's been my, so long. My follow-up follow question is: uh, What do you think, uh, what do you think uh, in, the future, in the future? What we can do, we can do as you mentioned before, to say before, Bamba say, everywhere, Bamba and everywhere. what do you think and is the meaning of Bamba meaning everywhere? Of Bamba what do you think everywhere. is the meaning of what that? Because what I what I think is the meaning is to bring the teaching of the, Muhammad Bamba to the communities. But it's not only by the name, Bamba, everywhere by the name only. What do you think about that? That's my question. Yeah, well, you know, so, so myself, you know, as a dedicated Christian, I want Jesus to be known everywhere, right? But mm -hmm. obviously almost everybody in the world's already heard that name. So I don't just mean the name, right? I want to see people living and acting the way he wants them to act. So when I hear in the Murid community, when I hear people saying Bamba Fi, Bamba Fe, Bamba Fip, yes. uh, or quoting the verse from his poetry that you quoted that they'll hear his teaching in their own language, my, my understanding is that Bamba everywhere when, when NST members are saying that is, is just very simply that many people would benefit from his teaching and follow his teaching about uh, what it means to be a, a healthy, good person, a person in right relationship with God. I, th I think that's what you mean, uh, but you guys have to tell me because I'm, I'm just listening. That's what I mean. But that's, I, that's, I, that's I, I, I also think that what mm -hmm. Hadim Busso is raising is a sociological moment we have to pay attention to. 
the quest of the universality of Bamba is a new phenomenon, which is mostly attached to two waves of migrants. The first wave is the wave of Murid settling in Senegalese cities, African cities. And the second wave is the Murid diaspora all over the world. And this created a shift. In the early phase, and all the literature in that period shows it, the Muri tried to specifically stay in Bawal and Kayon. They didn't want to go outside. And it was a kind of very powerful local ideology. And, 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 and Islam, which pays attention to something which is local. This is the first. And, you know, again, you see the literature, you see it. The second wave, the wave of universality, it's a moment where what Adil Bussou was saying, Bamba everywhere becomes a, a slogan. You know, one of my yeah. colleagues did this wonderful exhibit, which is called Scent in the City which is about the presence of Bamba in Bamba's images in Dakar. Mm -hmm. It was done by uh, Richard Roberts. And one thing which is fascinating is, and this is still the problem, I think, even among the MST, the tension between, on one hand, universalism being present outside and the other tension, which is the tension of retaining identity, which is specific. Mm -hmm. And the specificity of the identity is what you show, the way in which people are dressing, the way in which the body is sticking to the world. I, I think these are, these are very important. It's why I was asking the question about why peace? Why not race? Why not race? Because race is as important as peace in Bamba's approach. And in a country like the U.S., where racialization is institutionalized, this could be a narrative to deal with the integration of young women in this space. And it's why I think we need to pay more attention to the environment. Because it's three elements in the environment. The wider American society, the African American society, and the Muslim groups in the U.S. and the Murid MST will have to deal with that. These two groups and how dealing with these two groups allow them to shape because it's about that, to shape an identity which is effective. Not only here, because they are supposed also to maintain the relation with, with Senegal to a relation with Cuba. So, so these are problems which are very, very important. And I'm sure that the MST is dealing with because it's about producing a new culture which is informed by Bamba's lessons. Mm. It's not about using... Exactly. <laughs> On exactly. is about adjusting it to a different environment. You're right. So, so these are the questions for me, which are important. You raised uh, Hadim and Binter raised, but these are critical questions, uh, you know, which will change necessarily the structure of, you know, engaging with that. And I think these are very important issues to discuss. I can discuss it, of course, because I am not a Murid. <laughs> I am not a Murid, and I was born in a colonial city. So. And, but, and you, this, but I but, have written... But thank you for your nice witness. <laughs> yeah, and I have written in the early phase. You know, I, I wrote yeah. a paper with quite and, and And also, also the, the, the real Murid is the real Muslim. The Murid is, is the real hmm. Muslim. The, one of the reasons why Sering Tuba doesn't call people to, to a tariqa, he called them to Islam. He say, um, uh, uh, 
الله سي هو يبدا خير الاسلام فلن يقبل منه when you call people to islam that's mean they when they are murid that's mean they are muslims if you are muslim you murid that's it Yeah, I, I think it's just about what kind of, which kind of conversation we, we, we can have. And again, it's going back to the idea of the possibility of the emergence of an American, of an American Murid identity, which is also what historians are discussing. Can we talk about an American-African community different from the African American yes. community is also right. it's also a debate and what it means is very very important today you know Indian scholars are saying that the Indian community back in India is reimagining itself borrowing idea from the Indian diaspora this is also something which is possible. So what does it mean? What are the resources used? How they are used and received in the community is important. Again, what I was saying is what I have studied, the period I have studied about the Greeks, what I am actually defending is the idea that Murid cosmopolitanism is, cosmopolitanism is borrowing from Murid resources, not from global resources. Jonathan is saying, looking at the NST, that something new is appearing, which is much more linked to the West and the presence in the West than borrowing from, you know, bowel traditions. So this is also something important to deal with. Yes, Mr. Juf, if I may interrupt, if I'm being heard right now, um, you, you touched on, on a very important, and I'm, I'm thankful for Milton for mentioning that. I think with the Bamba Fepo, Bamba, Bamba Fibre, Bamba Ever, my understanding of it really as a young Murid is really the universal, the universal universality of Sheikh Ahmad Bamba's message, really. Because if you look at his read, his writings, such as Sindhi, if you look, look at the writings of Sheikh Ahmad Bamba, where he says, Irham Jami Yarwara, that universe has been taught by us, by our Sheikh himself. So he, he made reference to the Torah. He made reference to, to the Injil. He made reference to all the books. So us as being true to our the, to the teachings of our share we could no longer help but to bring the message everywhere because that's the point of view of Sheikh Ahmad Bamba as he was writing now NST is an organization worldwide. We have people that are requesting to be a member in Saudi Arabia, in China, in Senegal. We have even non-Muslims that are part of the, uh, sympathizing with our message. And I think what it shows over there is really shows that we were born within that context. And when it comes to our relationship with the Western world, my complete view about that is it's nothing new to us. And, and um, Alhamdulillah, I think we were able to beautifully highlight the, the two different, uh, if, we, if we can call it that, which is two different lifestyles, which is the, the Murid lifestyle and the American lifestyle. But us being conscious and being here in the United States, in our mind, it's one and it always has been the same. And the reading I have that is just the situation where I saw our Sheikh, Sheikh Ahmad Bamba, as we know him, completely lived with the Western man and the Western and the colonialists. All his writings, when you see, he's walking constantly in um, being accompanied by the Western man. So that is not a foreign concept for us. It's not a foreign concept for him to be in a foreign land and have to identify himself as a Muslim and as a Murid. So I think it's a continuation. Even now, I'm, I'm, it's just a different land for us, but the concept itself is not foreign. Even in Senegal, we do the same battle. We're in Dakar in a foreign land per se, because our teachings are not completely being uh, implemented in Dakar. However, when we go to Tuba, you can see us really fully embody the teachings of our Sheikh. Uh, so, so that lifestyle and the geography where we are, 
yes, it is something we can pay attention to of, but consciously, wherever we go is tuba for us. Wherever we go, we are murid, regardless of the situation. I think the real question, and probably Mr. Jonathan can help me answer that, is how can we get an awareness? How can we raise awareness of our situation as murids? How can we be respected just being murid citizens, murid Americans, and not being seen as a different vague of people, a different kind of people? How can we be here and fully live our muridism without being labeled or per se another type of American? Maybe he can help us find ways where we can be fully integrated within the American life and be recognized as such, inshallah. Um, I know that we are, yeah, this, we are past. This is a very, we are going to, but this is a good question, but it's not, <laughs> you have to be yeah. a babu. It's yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we will find so, uh, responses <laughs> to your questions. Sheikh Babu yeah. has written on that. And certainly mm. scholars has widely written on how murids, the murid diaspora adjust to different to different situations. And one comparison which could be very interesting is a book which was published in 1995 by an American, African-American anthropologist, which is called States of Grace, which is about the Murids in Italy. And he's already raising all the questions you are raising about this Muslim elite reinventing an identity. But if you, re you are too young to remember, in the 90s, uh, uh, the Khalif General Abdullah Mbake decided to ban the Federation des Etudiants Murid on the rope. And the discussion was against the discussion, the tension between what is universal and what is local in the lesson of Bamba's. The, the, the attempt to make Bamba's lesson universal and rethink the lessons was a very important thing. And it's created a crisis. This is also something. So you have a long history in which many of the questions you are raising are being raised and debated within, uh, you know, the, 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 the Murid community and outside the Murid communities by, by scholars from all over the world. You know, the Murids are probably the most studied group in the sociology, anthropology, and history of Senegalese sociological group. You have a huge library about them. And it's important to go back and revisit them and try to have a sense of how it's not, I'm not saying that they are saying, some are saying things which are good, some are saying things which are, but, but, but it exists and its need to be revisited. Jonathan. Um, doctor, maybe before Jer Jonathan go uh, ask that question, um, we have a few people that wanna ask questions. Uh, before that, I'm gonna read a question that came, came, came through. Um, how do we unite African-American communities and the Swedish Muid community? Uh, hold that thought. Hold that thought, and then let's have um, um, record the file, open your mic, and ask your question. Really very short uh, question. If it's a common commentary, don't open your mic. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. So I can comment only briefly on that to say that in my research, I realized that there are fewer African Americans involved in the Murid community today than there were in the past. So I, if I look at the research other people did, I look at the documents, I see that there are fewer African-Americans today. It probably has something to do with the leadership of uh, Muhammad Baluzi, uh, Al-Haji Baluzi, his, his leadership uh, was a very strong tie to the African-American community. Uh, with his death, I think there was a real loss um, how to rebridge that gap, I, I, I don't know, but that certainly would be a challenge for, for you all. I, 
I think I would just like to add that intellectually it's something which is being preached. One of the best today's African American scholars of African history he is an African American who's called, uh, his name is Butchwa. And his next book is actually translation, a translation of Amadou Bamba's poems. Hmm. And he has written a great book which is called The Walking Islam which is a history of Muslim education in the last thousand years. The walking Quran. Yeah. 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 That was yeah. five years ago. We did invite him, but he's traveling currently. Um, that's why he didn't join. Uh, you can ask your question. Ask your question. Yeah, thank you so much um, for this presentation. For this panel, actually, um, uh, this is Marco de Falso. I'm a PhD student here at the University of Nigeria, so I'm, I also do some research on the way, basically on the Nahiras. But one question I have is going to be online with the professor of the and it's about basically why the emphasis, why the emphasis on this transnational? Because um, if you take a look at Shah Anta Babu's article, Urbanizing Mystical Islam, so he is giving you a reason uh, for the establishment of urban dairas in Dakar. And those reasons we had like the marginalization so of Moritz in Dakar before the 60s. And then you have, you know, some other reason like basically uh, preventing them from organizing, um, you know, any kind of event in Dakar. So in this transnational space, so I, I see more or less, it's not like the same context. Moritz are not living, are not kind of experiencing marginalization, if I may say so because this context is quite open and uh, you know they have certain freedom, certain liberty to organize, to be in groups. Mika is right here. So they have this label as being a nonprofit organization. Um, so that is kind of giving them some leverage. So, um, so why, what do you see in terms of pedagogy that makes maybe, because the roots is still in Senegal. So I don't see the roots of um, 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 uh, NST located here. So the roots are basically far, basically in the Dahedaras, in rural Daras. So you have this, uh, let's say, uh, relationship between rural, urban, and from the urban to maybe, uh, you know, transnational. So how do you see the display beside the symbols and the invocation and the emphasis on the Hitma? Where do you fit in this pedagogical aspect in the, um, in their day-to-day -day, uh, experience and you know action. Thank you. You need to unmute, Jonathan. I, I, I muted you because you have an echo. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, thank you for your question. I'm I'm not entirely sure I understood all the aspects of your question, but um, you know the the shortest answer to the question: What is religious transnationality? Is that when people move they take their religion with them. And so, yes, Murids draw their everything straight from Tuba, but they live in New York, they live in Atlanta, they live in uh, Rome. And uh, like it or not, locality begins to press upon people and assert itself into their lives and they're transformed by that uh, experience and so today you have a dynamic situation where there's strong and healthy Murid communities in many places in the world communicating with each other. Uh, so things that happen in New York are quickly reported in, in uh, Jurbel and vice versa. So there's a real flow of information and ideas and practices back and forth. So, um, you know, I heard Murids in New York uh, chanting, Bamba owns New York. Well, after some research and conversations, I realized people are also chanting that in Dakar and chess. So there's, this is a very uh, dynamic field of, of uh, sociology and faith and the local situation impressing itself upon Murids wherever they're at.
Thank you. Do you have any other questions or comments? Yeah, uh, you have lemon back here. Uh, you want to share something? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm very sorry to maintain my this. I appreciate the discussion. Interesting. But uh, there's one point I wanted to make regarding. I heard. Regarding. But there, there are less and less African Americans joining, joining the Murid community than before. Than I talk before. about biology is living. But I sense also that in my travel in the diaspora, I think uh, uh, young Maurits are very eager to spread the teaching of Sheikh Ahmad Bamba, and they're very proud of themselves. But sometimes I think they try to impose the wall of culture uh, to new converts, be they Americans or Italians or whatever. And I think Murid, uh, I mean the Murid, which is based on true Islam, is is cross-cultural. So I think maybe the youngsters should make more an effort to uh, spread the teachings. But knowing that an American is an American, an American doesn't necessarily eat on the floor by his hand. I mean these are like cultural things, and I think Islam goes beyond cross-cultural things. I mean if you look at the uh, what they call the Mahasi Sharia, the objectives of Islam. Uh, you realize that in any civilization, you be you, uh, I mean, if you're from Jurbel, from Tuba, from Sweden, or from America, you can be a true Murid, but using your own culture. I think there's an effort that needs to be made on that side. Thank you. Sorry about that. Thank you. I think it's an important question, but it's also a question which raises the issue of, 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 of the identity of the Murid here has an expression of an expression which is which is radically war off. We like it or not. So the issue again is an issue of adaptation, is an issue of you know being integrating, acculturating or assimilating. These are also questions uh nsk whatever new culture is being brought here will have to address it's about how do you do that because probably a lot of people who are attracted by the Muridia are attracted by the way in which islam is understood through a culture which is a wall of culture we like it or not and how do you deal with that is important. Again, you know, one of Babu's, uh, Professor Babu's mentor, Professor David Robinson, has been writing about is Islam Africanized or Africa Islamized? So the tension between the two processes is an important tension uh, to, pay, to pay attention to pay attention to. Uh, I really liked uh, Lamine's intervention. Uh, I think he makes a very important point. One I've observed over and over in my research is, for example, um, I, I witnessed a young African-American woman uh, say the Shahada and join uh, Islam and join the Muridiyah. Uh, but she doesn't speak Wolof. And at the event, every single aspect of the evening where she was, everything happened in Wolof language only, except for when uh, the Imam uh, made sure she understood what she was saying in the Arabic Shahada, and he repeated it for her in English. So how does a young woman like that become an active murid if she doesn't speak Wolof and she doesn't know anything about Senegalese culture? So, Lamine, you raised one a very significant question. Mr. Jonathan, um, thank you so much for, again, emphasizing that question. I think even us as 
yeah, this has been also a challenge for us. And I'm glad that, you know, we can see that you're paying attention to the same challenges so it's it's a it's a gleaming light for us as well i remember one time one of our goals was to have a lounge like a murid lounge where it could be where a place where we could just serve coffee tuba have a big screen where people can come and watch the news and just have our bean bags laying around very informal i think we, we were trying to kind of like bring our american uh side of it a place where we don't have to come and be completely outside of our daily life of Harlem. And uh, unfortunately, that goal we haven't reached yet. We are still trying. Uh, and it was a way for us to be able to unite all murids. This is, this is heartbreaking. It's a travesty when we see that, that the people that we really think that in the future will be carrying, will be the standard bearer of muridism here, which are the Americans, uh, you know, we still have to face that challenge. So we are calling on our elders to really help us. What we are doing in NST is that we have our website, which is ndawiserintuba.org. And over there, we are trying to bridge, uh, you know, the gap and hopefully we will be able to succeed in the coming years, inshallah. All right. Um, the interest is pretty high, and I uh, like the dynamics. Uh, we are half an hour already uh, past yeah. the, the time. Uh, I'll take one question from um, Gordon Gilloir. Uh, your comment, uh, you can type it, but uh, a quick question because we have a long day ahead. Yeah. Gilloir. Uh, then I give the mic back to Dr. Juf. Thank you very much, CD. I think that this panel was a great panel with many questions, but also many, many answers. But I think what we have unveiled, which is really important, is, is processes. Processes in which social actors are trying to deal with issues which are issues about yeah the future of the next generation not only of, of the next generation of the Murids, but of the next generation of west africa what it shows also is the importance of religion the importance of religion has a kind of double instrument an instrument of to shape its singular identity, but an instrument which could allow you also to be included in a larger society. And what are the consequences of this uh, double pressure? Pressure is something important we'll have, we'll have to deal with. To address one question. This is the question of an American Muridia. Is it possible to reconcile values which are coming from different culture? Is it possible to deal with the impact of the environment in which people are settling on their tradition? But is it possible also to use, this is the whole discussion about peace, to use their tradition to affect the environment in which they are living. And these are questions which are in front of us. And the responses, NS2 is one of them, the, the responses are different. I think that it's impossible to say that you have one view of the Murids about how do you deal with the American environment. You have people who are, and I think is what is happening with the elite. I just mentioned that uh, uh, Don Carter has already shown that, that what happened in Italy in the 90s was the consequence of the emergence of a Murid elite, which is educated, which try to universalize Murid, which try to open a new discussion. And it's interesting because he's saying they are acting like southern Italian coming in North Italy, that it's a kind of 
a process of adjusting to the Italian and adjusting their ideology. Another thing which Jonathan said, but which many scholars have said, I have written about that, that what is interesting, and this is probably the most important challenge which we have discussed, is you have a generation which is settling in this country. And it's a generation of citizens. And they are acted differently from the early generation, which was not necessarily planning to stay. So I think that what we need to, and I hope, and I'm sure that the NST will do the work. I know that uh, Sri Mamon Bake is very interested on that. But these are questions which are defined by uncertainty. We don't know the trajectory, but we have to look at it and we have to work on it. And the pedagogical aspect, which is one of the critical lessons of Amadou Bamba, is very, very important to pay attention to that the teaching. What are young Muri taught in the US and how it is uh, taught to them, bearing in mind that they are in an environment which is actually an environment which could derail them. So what does it mean? It means that this is a critical intervention and the NST is absolutely a critical instrument to address the many, many challenges migrants being murid or not are facing in this country. So I would like to thank Jonathan, to thank Ada Binta Job, to thank Adin Busso for helping us have a very, very productive discussion by shaping it and providing the necessary information. So thank you very much. And I would like to thank CD also for the great job he has done to put together these many panels. So thank you very much. Have thank you. Day.